Well, let's take you back to our leading story now. Power Utility ESCOM says stage four load shedding will continue to be implemented until midnight tonight, after which stage two will be implemented until 5 a.m. on Wednesday morning. Stage three load shedding will resume at 4 p.m. tomorrow. ESCOM spokesperson Konati Manjanja says since yesterday morning, a unit each at Duba Medupi as well as three units at the Kendall power stations have returned to service. Now, let's discuss this further. We're now joined via Zoom by Professor Hartmut Winkler, a physicist and mm -hmm. energy analyst at the University of Johannesburg. Uh, Prof, thank you so much for your time this afternoon. Now, last week, ESCOM CEO mm -hmm. warned, in fact, the CEO, I would recall, warned that the country could be dealing with persistent load shedding for at least 18 months before you know new generating capacity can be added to the grid, uh, you know, just speaking to us mm -hmm. about the next 18 months, then are we likely to see some improvement? Uh, not very much. In fact, I think uh, 18 months is probably much too short. Mm -hmm. I expect it's going to be more like three years and it could even be longer unless a sustainable plan uh, to actually uh, fix uh, the South Africa's electricity system uh, it, it comes into place before then. Uh, because uh, ultimately we need more working power plants. We've, we have a lot of power plants which are simply uh, standing idle because they're broken. Many of them for a very long time. They talk about these unplanned breakages of 15 um, uh, uh, gigawatts. Now that's uh, 15 stages of load shedding which have been lying around unused, many of them for a very long time. And I'm wondering if there's any plan at all to uh, try and fix those. It's possible that it's, uh, there's no uh, plan to do so simply because it either costs too much or because it's almost impossible to do so. I think Eskom needs to tell us exactly what the state of each unit uh, in its fleet is, uh, how many are basically write-offs, how many of them are still functioning but need maintenance, and how many of them are all right. Uh, ultimately, I think that will determine how the next few years are going to look. The options are really as follows. Either you try and fix the coal power station, that, that is where most of the problems are at the moment. And also the coal power stations account for over 80% of South Africa's electricity production. So uh, if those are not working, if half of those are not working, we will have load shedding. Um, if they cannot be fixed, then we need to come up with an alternative. And unfortunately, that will take time. Mm. Uh, the quickest fixes would be to build solar and wind plants, but those take two years as well. Add to that the, the planning and, and, uh, uh, and awarding of contract process, we're talking about three years. That's why I expect for the next three years, we're going to see much of the same. Mm. Now, you know, you're just mentioning the 18 months again, you know, the reference to that COO, of course. And I mean, when I heard 18 months, I thought, oh, isn't that round about the time we will be going to the national elections in 2024? But mm. having mentioned unplanned outages that you've just mentioned now, you know, mm. the utility has always been struggling, you know, just to um, to keep the unplanned outages below that 13,000 megawatts, you know, to avoid load shedding. But just this Friday, I mean, uh, not even hardly five days, they've announced they've signed a deal with private producers that will see an additional 2000 megawatts or so. I guess the question then is, you know, will we then start to see some of these interventions that they are bringing in, particularly in as far as IPPs are concerned, you know, putting some form of stability to the grid? I know you say it would take some time. Uh, yes, well, th th those contracts they're talking about, at uh, uh, 2,000 uh, megawatts, uh, that would be solar. Bear in mind that solar plants only operate on average eight hours a day. So ultimately, that uh, amounts to a, a little bit less than one stage of load shedding relief. It it's good that they're doing that because uh, the, the uh, locations are ideally placed uh, uh, for that kind of intervention, but that is simply not enough. Uh, also, what is not enough is what's currently uh, been initiated by the uh, Department of Mineral and Energy Affairs. They've uh, just uh, uh, solicited uh, the uh, bids for a, a whole bunch of uh, new uh, coal, uh, sorry, not coal, wind and, 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 and solar plants. Uh, but these, those two, those are only going to be ready in three years. And uh, that's, that will amount to about one stage of load shedding. Uh, uh, but uh, we need far more than that. Ultimately, what it boils down to is that we need to 
uh, upgrade the plan that the country is currently operating by. The plan uh, it foresaw a certain amount of, of, uh, of uh, uh, coal uh, that is gradually going to be scaled, scaled down over the next 10 years or so. I suspect that we don't have that simply because there have been more breakdowns in the coal plants than, than expected. And as a result, the plan's just simply got to change. We need to now put our heads together uh, also, look at uh, the technological developments uh, uh, in the last, uh, say, three years or so, because that's how old our existing plan is. Uh, it should be the, the such plan should be updated every two years. The current one is therefore at least a year late. It should uh, now be, uh, and, and the process has barely started to get a new one out. In fact, I haven't really heard too much about it, but that that should be the priority to. And, and the, the country's electricity network must be decoupled from a political consideration. This is simply a case of, of ensuring uh, uh, electricity supply at reasonable cost. Uh, uh, as quickly as possible. Prof, I want to squeeze this last question in. You know, of course we know mm -hmm. that uh, these load sheddings, these blackouts are hammering our economy uh, to the mm -hmm. tune of over a billion rands a day. Uh, but what's also concerning is, you know, the city power as a utility saying that it's losing about mm -hmm. 3.6 um, million rands a day uh, as a result of the power outages. My concern is that some of the damage is to the equipment, you know, in terms of power yeah. restoration. So, you know, once ESCOM gets a d its ducks on the row, whenever that will be, the concern, of course, then is going to be to these providers, like the city powers, that are also, you know, damaging their equipment. How serious should we be taking this? Uh, yes, well, well, on top of the load shedding, it, 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 there are constantly some areas in the city that have some sort of a problem resulting from exactly that, whether it's, it's caused by cable theft or whether it's just simply caused by aging equipment. And there, too, there needs to be a, a, a revamping of the electricity infrastructure, just as there needs to be a revamping of the water infrastructure, which is causing the, the water problems right now. Mm. Uh, this just simply hasn't happened. And uh, I, I don't see uh, the, the city councils uh, 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 taking this as a priority right now. They seem to be more concerned about who's in, in, in bed with who. Mm. So uh, what we need is to shove aside the politics issue and people should just simply get together and try and see how are we going to get through this as, as, as well as possible. All right, Prof, thank you so much. Uh, that's where we have to leave it for now. Thank you so much for your time this afternoon. Of course, that was Professor Hartmut Winkler, and he's an energy analyst at the University of uh, Johannesburg.